Well, the Savannah Center for Diplomacy, Democracy and Development has called for national dialogue to address agitations in some parts of the country. Well, this is coming as other groups in Nigeria are calling for the country to be restructured. Public Affairs Analyst Mohamed Lawal joins us now to share his thoughts on this particular issue. Glad to have you, uh, Lawal. Yeah, thank you. Good. Uh, it's a pleasure. Good. Olubumi uh, Ifajobi of the Trade Union Ogun State Chapter, he says, I'm, I'm quoting him, you can't intimidate people to accept your agenda. What you can do is to sell your idea and build a consensus. Any victory achieved through blackmail cannot uh, last long. What sense do you make of that uh, statement in the light of people asking for restructure, secession? Well, I, I, if I get you right, he's saying that somebody shouldn't intimidate him to you know, fall into the agenda of somebody. Who is uh, he referring to? Is he referring to the Igbos or Inamdekanus, IPOP, Masov? Or some other entity, you know, in, within the country. Just make you clear, he's just saying that uh, what when people are asking for restructuring and all that and all that, they're trying to are they not trying to railroad the government into a project that is not on their agenda? Well, uh, first of all, let me say. This government agenda is not, uh, you know, in restructuring. Uh, it was not in their constitution. It was not campaigned during the 2015 presidential campaign. But, uh, you know, Nigerians have right to, you know, seek to determine their future through a constitutional means. It has to be pursued legally not through intimidating anybody or any part of this country. We have seen, you know, the hands of some adversaries to this government. We have heard, you know, speeches from people that are out to destabilize the government. If you recall, uh, people that are, Namdekanu who has been on the forefront of, you know, calling for a Biafran state or the Biafran country, it's a PDP man. In 2012, he was in London campaigning for Jonathan Goodluck. He was pushing for stability of this country when Jonathan was the president. Jonathan lost the election and he started abusing, castigating President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, Muhammad Lawal, can I, can, I, can I interrupt you there? Receiving can I interrupt you and come in and say some, some groups, especially the Afeni Ferry had said what APC had done can be called uh, political 419 because they promised, they did promise to restructure Nigeria. But I also remember that the APC chairman said, no, that's not what they've promised. That what they've promised is devolution of power. Be that as it may, which, which one sits better with you? Restructure or devolution? If devolution is what sits better with you, tell us how you think that can be achieved. Look, nobody is afraid on in restructuring this country. In fact, this country was ag amalgamated. So if we sit down and say we want it to be the amalgamated, so be it. Nobody is afraid of restructuring. Look, President Goodluck, in his 2014 compile, it was done, and uh, there were three recommendations. First recommendation can be achieved through executive orders. Second one can be achieved through legislative you know, you know, bills. The third one has to be done through, you know, a constitutional amendment. He didn't submit, he didn't do even the simplest one that he has the power to do unilaterally. And now he and uh, some of his people that uh, were in the government were, saying, were coming to say that they want the structuring, they want, uh, they are supporting the Biafran call for, you know, Biafran state. You see, this government is not afraid of restructuring. What we are saying is that let it, even if it is coming, let it come through the legitimate way that, uh, that such issues are addressed in this country. 
We have elected members in the National Assembly. They represent us and they have the mandate to look at these things. So let anybody who wants either restructuring, devolution of power, you know, take it through the right, you know, medium. Channel. And the right, right. medium uh, uh, and democracy is through the National Assembly. Uh, Mohammed, well, yes, uh, please. let's not go into who is saying Yes, what. I'm hearing you. Yeah, good. Let's not go into, because you mentioned mm. uh, Nambi Kalo, and then I don't think I heard you mention what uh, yeah. the youth in the north said, you know, which is treasonable in some quarters. People have talked about that. But let's not go there. Is this a, really a question of secession mm. or restructure? As much as it is a failure of leadership to provide equity, fairness, and a sense of belonging. Look, if it is secession that uh, you know the people from the southeast who have any fairy ones, let them table, let them table it on the let them put it on the table, and let us discuss it. Nobody is afraid of secession or restructuring. But what we are saying is that let it be tabled properly. And look, you mentioned about the youth in the north. The youth in the north... Lawa, you're not getting my question. To Hold on. Make a statement. Hold on. That's not yes. my question. Mm. That's not my question. What I asked is... Okay, is go ahead. Can you please state your question? Good. Mm. Is it really not a question of the failure of leadership? that will provide fairness, equity, okay, okay. and belonging, rather than that of restructuring or secession? That's my question. Yeah, well, uh, what I, well, if you are talking about the failure of leadership, that uh, people from different parts of this country are either asking for restructuring, devolution, whatever, that is not far-fetched. And uh, leadership from where? Who are the first people? Who are the first entities that are calling for restructuring or devolution? You see, each, 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 each part of the country has uh, states, and uh, there are local governments. And each part of this uh, government has you know, its own uh, mandate to cater for the welfare and the well-being of the people. So if there is failure from an aspect of, uh, you know, of the governance, it cannot be loaded on the federal government alone and say that it is either the northerners or the Bahari administration that is not willing, you know, to give people their right or their well-being or their belonging, you know. So it has to be properly addressed. That's what I'm saying. Leaders, they may have their own, you know, portion of the blame to take, but definitely sure you cannot say you know, if the leaders in the southwest or in the southeast have failed to address the need of their people, you cannot load it on the federal government or on the leaders of the whole country. Okay. Key on, on the major issue has to do with resource control and the issue of true federalism comes to play when you're talking about resource control and how can the people take care of the peop their own people from what you're postulating now if majority of what they make goes to the federal government? Well, that is the reason why we say, look, if you feel what you are given to you is not equitable enough, there is a way to do it. And let us put it on the table and discuss it, you know, in a civilized manner. You don't have to come and start abusing people, you know, ca casting as fashions and, uh, you know, uh, threatening people and the thing that you can get what you want. You know, let's put it on the table and discuss it. You remember, even the, the, even the equitable distribution of uh, uh, the 13% derivation and how what goes to the federal government and the state government, it didn't evolve uh, in one day. It didn't evolve in one year or one month. It, it evolved through discussions. And, uh, you know, the, let's say, for example, the 30 derivation that goes to the oil producing countries, it wasn't 30% before. You know, so All right, if thank we you think very much, there sir. are challenges coming, you can, mm. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mohamed Lawal, a public affairs analyst, for your time on TVC News R.